welcome to the Renegade Economist Special with Professor Michael Hudson touring the country on our behalf raising the issues of this non-stop epidemic of reinflating asset bubbles. Michael, we're going to start off back in the 70s. Can you tell us uh, what has happened as the neoliberal movement has developed uh, since the 70s? You wrote, you wrote two really powerful books um, in the 70s, 1972, Super Imperialism, and 77, Global Fracture. Can you take us through the oil price shock and stagflation, and then perhaps into Reaganomics? In the 1970s, the United States went off, went off gold, and that enabled it to create credit without any limit. So the source of new credit creation in the world became the U.S. economy. And uh, any credit on the asset side of the balance sheet is debt on the negative side. So the result was that most of this new credit was lent out uh, to borrowers and uh, when the savings rate fell to zero uh, because when a loan is uh, lent out uh, is a debt, uh, the increase in debt offsets the rise in saving. So you had a zero savings rate, but uh, the gross savings rate remained just as high, about 18%. And uh, what that meant is that uh, after about 1980, uh, the wealthiest 10% of the population were doing almost all the saving, and the bottom 90% were running into debt to the top uh, 10% of the people. So the result was a financial polarization uh, between creditors and debtors. Now, 70% of bank loans in the United States, Britain, and other financial centers were lent out as mortgage credit because the philosophy of bankers is they want to remain safe by lending against assets already in place. And the largest asset in every economy is real estate. And about uh, half the value of real estate in the United States is land. And in Australia, it may be as high as 75 or 80 percent uh, because it's uh, relatively low-rise housing. So the money that was lent out by banks uh, as interest rates uh, fell, uh, you could borrow more and more money, uh, a given rental value of property, and you could pledge this uh, for, uh, for a loan, and uh, homeowners would see prices rising. They felt that if they didn't buy, uh, they'd be left out, and the, uh, obtaining the price of a home would rise further and further out of their range. So they went deeper and deeper into debt uh, to buy homes as long as prices were rising. Well, prices were rising because interest rates uh, declined from their peak of about 19, uh, 20, over 20% 20 in 1980 down to about 5% today uh, throughout much of the world. And as interest rates uh, decline, that meant that a given flow of rent, a given income, would uh, carry a larger and larger bank loan. So the result is that debt rose relative to uh, GDP, uh, to national output, uh, and also to wages, and especially relative to disposable personal income after paying taxes and after paying debt service. So uh, the result is that the economy became thoroughly loaned up. Uh, homeowners were able to borrow the interest by refinancing their mortgages, taking out larger loans, uh, and this was called uh, equity extraction. And the banks promoted the uh, metaphor of using your home like a piggy bank. Well, a home isn't really like a piggy bank at all, uh, because in a piggy bank, you draw down savings that you've already made. Uh, but using a home as a piggy bank meant going further and further into debt. And this meant that you had to pay more and more uh, carrying charges on the debt out of uh, future wage uh, income. And the result is that by paying more and more out of your wages, uh, you, this income is not available to be spent on goods and services. So markets shrink. For instance, in the last week or so, Australia has risen the bank has raised the bank rate from three percent to three and a quarter percent. This means that long term mortgage interest rates reset and people have to pay even more of their uh, uh, carrying charges for their houses to the bank, leaving even less to be available to be spent on goods and services. This means fewer people can afford restaurants, fewer people can afford non-essentials, and markets shrink, uh, less capital investment is made, 
and uh, employment falls, and the re as employment falls, uh, wages uh, decline. In the United States, real wages have not risen since 1979 on balance. So uh, when people think that there's been a rise in uh, prosperity, what they really mean is that their house prices have gone up while they haven't been making any more. And they think they're richer because house pricing prices have gone up, but they own less and less of their houses because they've taken out a larger and larger mortgage in order to obtain it. Uh, last year, for the first time in, 2000, in 2007, uh, the, for the first time in U.S. history, the uh, homeowner's equity fell below 50%. In other words, most of the house value was owned to the banks, not owned by the bank owner. Last year, this uh, fell uh, to about 42%. In other words, homeowners only owned 42% of the banks uh, of the uh, house. The banker got 58%. And now, because of the price decline, uh, homeowners' equities fall into only about one third of uh, the property. The banks own two thirds of the property, not the homeowner. The bank gets uh, virtually all of the uh, rental income uh, that the tax collector has uh, given up uh, in interest, uh, forcing the tax collector to shift the tax off property onto labor. So labor is taxed more and more heavily as uh, the taxes are cut on property, and the uh, homeowner has to pay not only uh, higher taxes, but also higher interest charges equal to the amount by which taxes are cut, because uh, the way that a homeowner buys a home is to bid against other homeowners and until an equilibrium market price is reached, and the equilibrium price is where the prospective buyer pays the entire land rent the entire rental value of property uh, to the bank. So there's a double whammy of uh, homeowners in Australia, the United States, and other financialized economies having to uh, pay not only higher taxes, but higher interest rates. And uh, cutting the uh, property tax ends up not reducing the property price at all because that's set by market forces. The property price is equal to what a bank will lend, and the bank will lend enough to absorb all of the rent itself. So instead of the government uh, getting the uh, revenue from the uh, rent, as the governments have got since 3000 BC, all throughout classical antiquity, uh, throughout uh, the Middle Ages, uh, down to about the 20th century, uh, instead the banks have now replaced the government as becoming the major recipients of uh, the land rent. And uh, that has become a tragedy for economies such as Australia because uh, the higher uh, housing charges, uh, about 40% of national income now, uh, personal income, uh, and the higher debt charges, and added 15%, and the higher uh, social security and taxes, about 10, 11 to uh, 13%, are so high that before uh, the Australian uh, worker even begins to spend money on food and other necessities, they already have to pay about two-thirds of the income fixed to uh, uh, the banks and uh, uh, the creditors uh, for the uh, access to home ownership uh, and education and credit. So Australian industry is priced out of world market by the heavy uh, uh, costs of financializing the economy, that is the heavy cost of the bottom 90% paying the banks and the wealthiest 10%. So Australia is becoming a financialized economy on exactly the same path that Iceland and Latvia and other debt-strapped economies have paid. It's facing a future of debt deflation, and uh, while uh, most of the growth in Australian employment has been in the service sector, mainly uh, the financial overhead sector, finance, insurance, and, in, and real estate, the fire sector, industrial employment has gone down and down because Australians are left with no, uh, nothing to export except uh, their minerals and subsoil uh, wealth. So uh, essentially, Australia is turning into a third world type economy, a hewer of wood and drawer of water, as they used to say in uh, the biblical times, uh, but in this case, uh, into a minerals exporter. And you don't need much uh, employment to export minerals. Uh, the empl uh, the uh, population that's increasing is finding less and less opportunity to work in the real economy in manufacturing and producing goods and services, leaving it uh, pretty much uh, uh, at the mercy of uh, the financial sector.